Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, The Simple Happy Life. I'm Sabrina, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some recent additions to our homeschool. Some of these items we've already started enjoying and using, some items we haven't even opened yet, but I know that my boys are gonna be so excited about. Uh, you may have seen me share a few of these items already in other videos. Some of these items I've shared on Instagram, but like I said, we've been enjoying some of these already, so I thought you guys might like to see uh, what we've added to our homeschool. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So I think I'm gonna break the video down into sharing um, like stuff we're adding for morning time, things we've brought in for math, things that we've brought in for art, and things that we've brought in for history, culture, science. And then um, I have like two kind of random bits that I'll share with you. Um, so let's jump into this. These are items that I brought in to um, add to our morning time. We called it daily digs last year because the boys felt like morning time felt like circle time and that felt babyish to them. Um, and so we'll probably call them daily digs again. And then uh, others, you know, call this their morning basket, even though you can do it at any point of the day, it's just like an anchor for some it's around lunchtime, it might be around bedtime. Um, and we do read bedtime stories as well. Um, but this is how we start our day. And I've already shared this before, but my oldest wanted a copy too. So I got him one. And so there's different scriptures and they will do it for four pages. So I'm thinking we're just gonna focus on a scripture a week. And so, let's see. You can kind of see there's little pictures. Um, so I'm thinking that we will read, find, look up the scripture in the Bible, have them do that, um, color, talk about it, and work on memorizing the scripture throughout the week. Color, talk about it, draw their own picture, and talk about it. Um, and so we will focus on these because we will do this uh, for four days a week is my plan. So this will be a part of our daily digs um, that we dig into daily. <laughs> and then this um, beautiful book will also be a part of our um, daily readings. And so I'm going to show you inside. I think I'm going to take this sleeve off. So it's already kind of gotten bent, but you see it's still a very beautiful cover. So I'm just going to. Ah, it's a heavy one. It's beautiful. It's heavy. Um, and it has a bookmark. So we've been using that. But um, let's see. Turn to the back for you. Kind of give you a flip. Look at that. How gorgeous. Now I've just seen... Uh, quite a few people sharing this one um, and so I've had it on my list for a bit but I think I, I made the went ahead and made the purchase after uh, Tori at the Oglesby Ohana shared it a while back and I was like yep that's going to be a part of our morning time this year so definitely excited about this one how beautiful these pictures are so, all right. So I'm clearly getting lost in that, but it's so pretty. So, so, so pretty. So let's see. Actually, I wanted to share that um, I try to, you know, make sure I share if I am inspired by someone who has shared um, a resource that I share where I got that resource from. Um, you know, sometimes we are in the homeschool community and so we just come across stuff often and we don't even remember where we got that idea from. Um, but this one, um, Samantha at our homeschool journey one shared that she was using this with her girls and gave a flip through. And I thought, um, my guys, I thought my youngest would like it, but then, like I said, my oldest one wanted one too. So he has his copy now. We are also adding in the Big Life Journal Daily Edition. And I'm super excited about this because I've shared before we have the Big Life Journal and that is something we do one-on-one -on -one with the kids, but this is something they can do independently um, daily. And I'm really excited for this to be a part of our daily digs. They've already started it, so I won't share um, their work, but you can see it has stickers in the back and it's got like this grid paper. 
which they thought was cool because I use a traveler's notebook and I have grid and bullet paper in my planner. Um, so they thought that was sweet and they have traveler's notebooks too. So they just like the feel of this. So this is where they are. So I won't go for any further back, but you can see they have like, I'm grateful for, I learned, I felt, so just different prompts for them. And they, this is something they could do in the mornings that we're going to do it in the mornings. This is something they could do in the evenings, but I'll leave a link for, um, for everything below that I can, um, if you guys are interested in checking this out. But we have loved Big Life Journal. So the last thing that we are adding to our morning time or daily dig basket is uh, this, and this is for me. I am going to be working on hand lettering while my boys are doing their cursive. So um, after we do these things um, and mindfulness, and we will rotate, besides the character and the um, poem, because that's daily. And you can jump into this whenever, right? It's a poem for every day of the year. So if you want to get it in October, you can, and you start with October. Um, but we will um, rotate through the things that we do, including our mindfulness and like our Headspace app and mindfulness cards and things like that. Those three things we will do. And that will probably take about 20, maybe 30 minutes. And then the boys will um, practice their cursive while I do this. This is from the Target bullseye spot or dollar spot. And I will be doing this along with them. So I would be practicing my letters here with them. And I think it's sweet to see them um, watching me learn and practice something as well. So I thought this was really sweet. Now I would probably probably finish before they finish their page. And so I will then go ahead and get our math lessons set up. So let me show you what I've brought in um, to add to our math stuff this year. So these are some math books that I brought in to add to our lessons. This is a suggestion from Hannah at Pepper and Pine, and it is a pop-up book. And there are so many little flaps in here. I'm definitely not going to be able to share them all. But the boys have been enjoying this already. And I think it's so fun to have all this and just kind of keep them engaged. So if there is a page or a little section that goes along with one of our lessons, I think they will find interesting. I'll just grab this and pull it in. Um, but this is just kind of one that I would let the boys work on or read through themselves. And they have, they've just been grabbing it and sitting and kind of getting lost in the flaps. And that's been really fun. So there's just so many. Look at this. <laughs> I'll probably, I'll pull that back up in a minute. But this one keeps going. So um, this is a really, really sweet book and the boys have been having fun with that one. So I'm glad I picked this one up. Math isn't always, um, I don't know how this, I'm going to fix that later. <laughs> Math hasn't always been um, the easiest subject for us. And so bringing in these things um, last year, a, a bit by bit, I found to be so helpful. So um just upping that this year as we are focusing on math and starting our lessons for the day with math. Uh, so this one is fun. So hopefully I won't make you dizzy in the video, but you have um, the numbers here at the bottom. And then you can see as you go around, nine times nine is 81, nine times 10 is 90, nine times 11 is 99. And you can just keep seeing the problems. As you go around, right? And so when you open it up, this opens out again. And then as you flip through the pages, you know, you can have this, you can turn it to the two. And then this one has a bunch of flaps as well. And it kind of gives them tips and things to think through. So this is a really fun one. Some of them have like mixed practice in here and um, just lots of flaps to keep them engaged. And so this is what all of them have flaps throughout. It's just really fun. 
So they have been enjoying this one as well. Just sitting and doing it and getting lost in that. I love, I love seeing that. And then this one, me and my oldest, who's going into fourth grade, have really been enjoying. And I would pull in, you know, to coordinate with a lesson. What's the point of math? You've probably seen me share this one on Instagram already. But we have thought this was really cool. Here are the contents. And so I'll just give a quick flip. The illustrations in this are really cute. <laughs> That's pretty. I just felt like that page was pretty. <laughs> But my kids want to know, you know, what is the point of math? Why do we have to do these things? What were they ever used for? And this book answers a lot of those questions in a fun way. So next, I think I'll share some of the manipulatives that we have brought in. Um, you've probably seen this many times before, but it's just like the stamp game. Um, you see a lot of uh, Montessori families or um, classrooms with these and um, helps with place value, exchanging numbers as you're um, adding into double digits and further. And there's lots of um, videos and tutorials on how to use this game, but we've only used it a few times so far and the boys have seemed to like it. And uh, yeah, so they'll use this in addition to their abacus to kind of go back and forth and practicing those things. My kids don't love writing things down. So for me right now, if they can show me the work using manipulatives um, and talk me through it, then I'm, I'm good with that. And then we write it down. They still have to write it down because I think that that's important. Um, but we start with this. There's been less tears and frustration. And then the other thing that we got, and they can work through problems using that um, on their own, uh, were these, you probably also see these in a Montessori uh, classroom or inspired <laughs> learning space. So this is um, multiplication and division board. It comes in this box. It comes with some directions, but you can find video tutorials online of how to use these with your kids. Um, and then they have the beads to go with the multiplication board and the beads to go with the division board. And so we haven't used the division one yet, but they have worked with the multiplication one and they've enjoyed that. Just write out problems and then they solve them using uh, the beads. Now I haven't opened these wrap ups. I'm going to try them and see if they like them or if it will confuse them. I think that they will like them. Um, so they have them for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and fractions. And I think it comes with like a little CD. My kids don't always love the CDs and songs that uh, come with these type of things, but we're gonna see, we're gonna use it and we're gonna see um, and work on these skills. And this is something I'm hoping they will be able to do independently while I work with the other on spelling or different lessons. So they will have, um, let's see, I guess I could, how easy or hard would this be to open? Oh, popped open. And I'm not about to take it out completely but I just wanted to see what one kind of even felt like. So it was plastic, obviously, but it's pretty thick. It doesn't feel like it's going to break on us. And so there are different packs. So this should be, this should be fun. I hope they'll enjoy this. I think they'll like this. They really do enjoy hands-on things. And I feel like it's a good way to reinforce the things that we're learning in their lessons. And with these, I got the, um, this one for my second grader. Um, just as we go back into 
um, our lessons as a nice review for him. I think he'll have fun with these worksheets and this will be independent work. And then I did the same for my third grader. Um, nice review before we go into our fourth grade year. So that's what's inside of these. And I think you do need these in order to do these. Um, so I will link those below, but this is what they will be starting with for independent work for math. Um, so we'll still do our math lessons, but this will be a nice independent review. So the next thing I want to share for math, I'm just going to do this quickly because I'm thinking about sharing this in a separate video and I don't want this video to be too, too long, <laughs> but we're going to be having, um, uh, finance Fridays. And so Fridays is when is my finance Friday and my planner where I work on bills and things like that. Um, but we will also be learning about money in our homeschool. So we won't have a math lesson on Fridays. So we will have a money lesson and we're going to be using this from the thinking tree. I really, uh, you saw the devotions we've used the Minecraft. Um, and I just really, I like these. So I purchased this one off of Amazon but I found later, so you can get some, um, a peek at the worksheets. I found that they have um, a digital version of this. So I'm going to um, I purchase that. So I might return this, I'm not sure, just because I have two students and um, I can print them out with my HP ink program. I think it'll be a little cheaper. And then if we wanna do this again next year, then um, they'll have a, you know, a deeper understanding of things and I can use it again for them instead of just having this one and having them write out this, this stuff. I feel like that would make our lessons take a little longer. Um, but if you had an older student and they wrote a bit quicker, then you probably could just work through this and they do their work um, in a different or separate notebook. So that's what's in there. So along with this one, we will be using Whatever Happened to Penny Candy as a suggested um, book to go along with this. And so we're going to be doing that and reading through this to find answers to the questions in this one. And then the Everything Kids Money book we'll be using as an aid to this. And I'm really looking forward to doing this with the guys. They've been asking a lot of questions about money and how money works. And uh, they have um, green light cards, which is like a master card. And um, they get weekly allowance for community work around our house, not keeping their room clean or their bathroom clean because that's their stuff. But um, like dishes and um, taking out the trash, helping keep the plants water, mopping, sweeping, all that type of stuff, um, they get paid for. It. And so um, they've just been asking more about it. And the way we've set it up is that they automatically get um, paid when they do their chores and it automatically um, takes part of it for saving and takes part of it for tides and um, charity and things like that. So, and the rest of it, they can choose to spend how they like or add to their um, savings accounts. So this is a DK book that we will be using. I love DK books. If you didn't know that, and I know I absolutely love DK books because I feel like um, we'll be able to use them for years to come and that they're a good investment. Um, and so this one is how money works. I don't feel like this one's necessarily for children, but DK always has great infographics and you could use this if you wanted to do a unit study for your kids um, and kind of look at the contents and how they have it broken down let's see if I can get that to kind of come in focus for you then you could um, break that down and so I am really excited for this for myself even as we learn more about money so I'm just going to do a quick flip through so you can see the, some of these infographics and I think um, just kind of looking through that it will be a nice
nice way to give um, visuals to the concepts being talked about in here. They have some visuals too in there. Uh, they're all black and white, but I think this will um, be a nice book, like I said, that will grow with them. So, I mean, I know this stuff is always changing, but I think this is a nice, um, you know, covering of the basics. So, that is Finance Friday. So next I'll share some of the art supplies that we brought in since my last haul. These are watercolor brushes. These are giant. They are beautiful and I am really looking forward to a school year in incorporating all of this art. Um, some of you may know that my boys have requested to learn how to draw and paint this year. And so I wanted to make that a big part of our homeschool um, and so um, bringing in these different things. Um, so these are some beeswax candles. Cameron has really been enjoying these. We've only used them a few times, um, but they are really nice. I wasn't expecting that, um, but I enjoyed coloring with them as well. For Shark Week, we brought in this book. I really um, have been enjoying these how-to draw books. We definitely look up tutorials online, which is nice, but sometimes, you know, they can get off if you give them a screen. <laughs> the next thing I know, you know, they're watching other YouTube videos and that's not what I'm trying to do. So I like having these books and they can kind of go at their own pace and they don't have to keep, you know, pausing things that might be online, which is fine. And we will use online resources, um, but I, I like having these drawing books around. This one is one I'm going to use with the boys, but probably more for me. I got the spiral so I can kind of lay it out as I'm working on things. But I'm excited to use this one. And I think that's important, guys. If you are excited about what you're doing in your homeschool, like why would you expect your kids to be? Um, and it also helps me, you know, it motivates me that, hey, this is what we're going to be doing today. I'm so excited. So infusing those things throughout that I'm going to enjoy as well. I don't know anything about art. <laughs> I don't know how to draw. Oh, look how pretty. Um, but I'm going to enjoy learning this right alongside my boys. And like I said, we will be probably doing some online art classes. Um, I would totally sign them up for in-person classes, but that's just not what we're doing this semester. Um, usually we try to finish up school by noon and then they'd have like karate or coding or a class at a local one of the uh, at a local museum or um I don't know what else do they do football hip-hop dance um so we just try to finish up so they could get to those activities but this semester is going to be a little slower we're not going to have co-op um so I just want to make sure that we are still learning and growing and practicing skills that you know could easily be overlooked because I'm not putting them in the class because I normally outsource things that I don't know how to do. But I'm going to learn this alongside my boys, like I said. Okay, I'm getting lost in this book. I'm going to close this book now, but I, I'm loving, loving, loving it. This one I've seen um, Hannah at Pepper and Pine share. It's been in my cart or wish list for a long time now, um, maybe two years. Like from the beginning, I thought, we might want to do this, but, but I don't think um, that we are ready for it. But now that they've asked to do it, yes, this was a, this was a go. And I almost forgot about it until I went back and looked at my wish list. It's like, how could I forget about that book as we go into incorporating more art this year? I'm not, I'm not sure how I forgot about it. So absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to explore this with them. Okay, next we have some watercolor paper. This one is a 9 by 12. This one is an 11 by 15. We have watercolor paper, but it was buckling on us. So I thought I'd spend still a little bit more for our projects um, so that we have a nice, a nice final product of our projects and not curled up paper. <laughs> um, so it worked when they didn't put too much water on the paper, but that's not where we are. So um, I don't want their efforts, you know, I don't want them to be frustrated. 
And so next I picked up this loom. I never thought, ever know, <laughs> I would have purchased a loom um, for my kids. And so we are project people. And I think that this will be a nice project for him. Uh, well, for both of my kids, but I was thinking about my oldest and just helping with attention and focus. Um, and he likes ha making things with his hands. So I think they'll both enjoy this a lot. I don't consider myself to be a super arts and crafty mama, but um, trying here. And so this loom is a part of that. Um, just trying to bring that more so into our home. These are so they can make the little tapestries. They came kind of bent, so I put them in a book to flatten them out. I might need to do it a little more, but um, that is what these are for. It's like an owl, a turtle, and a fish, so I think it ends up making. So we haven't actually put the loom together yet, but um, it's not, it doesn't look like it's going to be difficult to do. I'm actually probably going to have my um, oldest, who's nine, put it together. So it'll look like that when it's standing and then... Hopefully he will create, <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe we'll start with like a small sack or something like that. Um, maybe he can give it to his cousin for Christmas even. So that's what we will um, do with this. So I'm going to put this to the side. But this will be fun. I'm looking forward to this and using this with them as well. Feels like nice fall winter activities to do right especially in the winter when it gets too cold to really enjoy outside at least for me anyway i like the fall it's not too cold around here um it feels just right but in the winter time it's time to sit down inside by a fire um let's see we also got this because my kids love coding so much i thought my um youngest he is seven would really enjoy this so this is a cute little bot um uh chanel at two lights academy shared her sprout using this and cameron saw it and said can i get one of those so i talked to his dad and he was like yeah let's try it so um you see this little this little shapes that he's making you code him to make to draw the shapes and it's very cool um they've already started using it and Let's see. It's it's easy for you to set up. They actually set it up. I think my husband helped a little bit, but um, they did it. So that's like the easy, medium. They have some hard and they have directions in English and Spanish. So they they are liking that. So this is a nice, fun activity for them to do as well. And he is so cute. Okay. So I think that's it for the art. Oh, and this comes with some markers, which I think there's already the green one is inside of the robot right now. And then it's got these other colors too. So the, there's a lid on top of the green one that's already inside. So I haven't really played with that one, so I can't tell you too much about it. Other than that, they look like they're having fun doing it. And so while this isn't necessarily, I'll share this, an art supply, I did pick up another one of these um, book stands. I think they're really nice when we are drawing or trying to follow an illustration of a book that doesn't have the ring so you can't lay it flat um, to be able to put this out and just to display the big books that we're using um, in our unit studies as well. So now we have two of these and we're really enjoying them and we... Um, uh, I recently did a giveaway with some other mamas and it was a part of the homeschool organization giveaway. And um, so I think whoever received this was very happy with it. I mean, she told me that she was very happy with it. Um, so this is this is a really, really sturdy stand. Uh, it, it holds even the big boys. So this last little stack I wanna share with you are our science, history, geography, cultural type things that I've brought in. This little pocket genius book. Actually, I think these are so cute, but we hadn't picked up one yet from DK. Um, but I did get the shark one to add to our shark week. 
uh, unit. We pretty much do Shark Week every year. And so to have additional resources to add is nice. So you saw the art one and this um, that I brought in this year. And these are so cute and perfect for their little hands and just packed with lots and lots and lots of information. Um, and so that was fun. We are going to be using this tray for our life cycle tray. And we're going to do a B unit this year. I haven't planned out all the details of that or, or, or if it's going to be like a subunit like our turtles. Um, we will see. But I'm excited about this because they asked if we could learn about bees this year. So this is such a cute little tray. These little um, life cycle animals came in this. You can find these on Amazon. You can also get them from Michaels. I think you can use a coupon with these from Michaels as well. Um, but they have different ones. So I just thought this tray was adorable for that. And um, this is another DK book, of course, of American history. We're going to, my son is going to fourth grade this year, and we're going to be doing um, a lot more with U.S. history. So this is a visual encyclopedia, and it is gorgeous. So I'll just give you a quick flip of these. And these are always perfect to aid in your unit studies, uh, in your lessons, um, as an extra addition to, you know, a worksheet or something like that. So these are um, great books that I, again, DK books will grow with your kids. So here is the table of contents for this. And you could honestly make your own units. And some DK books have teacher guides um, on their website. So you can print those off and use along with the books. I think they have one for the B book I want to get. We haven't picked that up yet, but I don't want to buy anything until I have. A, that's, that's just introduction to the book. But I don't want to buy anything yet for the B unit outside of the things that I saw, outside of what I just showed you and some of the things we already have until I, you know, kind of plan out what we're going to do for that. Um, so for Hispanic Heritage Month, which starts, I think, mid-September, goes through mid-October, um, we are going to talk about the diverse cultures of within the um, Latino, American, Latino community. But I want us to focus on Mexican Americans. And let me flip through this while I talk about it. Um, because... I mean, no real deep reason, but my oldest has, oh, her name is Sabrina. My oldest has um, been doing like the North American puzzles and really been interested in the states, like putting all the states in. Now he's been interested in Mexico. And so since he's kind of had an interest and wanted to learn a little bit more about Mexico, I thought it would be nice to learn a bit about Mexico and Mexican Americans um, during um, Hispanic Heritage Month. So we're going to be reading through this and because this weather should be getting cooler and who doesn't love hot chocolate, we're going to be making some um, authentic Mexican hot chocolate. So that is my plan. I haven't gotten all the ingredients yet, but I did pick this up. Um, I think this is a pretty popular one. I've had um, Mexican hot chocolate before. I've never made it, so this will be a first, and hopefully my boys will enjoy it too. Um, I think this box is interesting because, and hopefully I don't sound any type of way by saying this, but I feel like I've never met a friend's abuelita that looked like this box, but sure, but sure. I think it's going to be tasty, and I'm looking forward to it, guys. It smells so good, and I could just, you know, be learning and new to this, but these discs, oh my God, they smell, I'm sniffing them. They smell so good. It's like cinnamon. I don't know. It's so good. I can't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait that long to make it now that I have it, but I'm looking forward to this with the guys and they're going to love it because they love hot chocolate and they love cooking. So this will be fun. So this next book is called What's on Your Plate? Exploring the World of Food. And my kids love to cook and we have children's cookbooks and they like to look through them and pick out a meal that they want to make for the week. Um, we loosely meal plan. And so I'll make sure I have the ingredients for them to make that meal. 
Um, but I want us to continue to study different countries and different culture and different people um, through food. I think that my boys love trying different foods and this is a great segue into um, another's culture. So we're going to be using this page as we are learning about Mexico and Mexican Americans and making some guacamole. We make guacamole all the time, but we're going to try this recipe. Um, and it's, uh, I'm looking forward to doing this with the guys. So um, if you guys know of any like cultural kids cookbooks, um, would you drop them in the comments below? I'm looking for some more for my kiddos. Last book I picked up is called Harvesting Hope and it's a story of Cesar Chavez. And I think that it will be um, a nice way to introduce his story and his contributions to our country, to my kids. I love picture books and how they give us these beautiful illustrations along with the narrative. And I don't know, just relay this beautiful story about hard truths um, and realities. And I don't know, they, they need to know it. They have to know it. But um, I just like that we can introduce it in this way. So I'm glad that I was able to pick this up to add to our shelves. We have other biography books um, for like of Hispanic Americans and resources to teach Latino history. But I wanted to bring in some more picture books. And so I am very happy with this one, it's beautiful. So that is it as far as the books. The last thing I wanted to share with you guys, hopefully it won't be too uh, too much reflection in the camera, um, are these like portfolios. They have dividers in them. So I'll put their like name here. And this is where I'm gonna put their independent work in these folders. So you guys know we're doing unit studies, so we'll have our morning time, we'll have our math, and then they will do some independent shelf work along, um, but while I'm doing, while I'm working with the other, then we'll come together for our unit studies, which will include our language arts and literature and science and social studies. Um, but then they will have individual work and practice to do. And so that's where I'll put in here, their monthly page, their planner page, and then their work. And I'm thinking I'll put their work for the week on the front side, and as they complete, they can put it on the back side. So this will be new to us. Um, we're gonna see how this goes. This is an idea from Jessica at the Waldock Way. This is how she's storing her daughter's work this year. So I think she has a five one, but I got a little more because there's some projects I want my boys to be working on uh, for music, for coding, and so I'll have them um, kind of write out what they're doing and I will see it in here and they can have it um, live in here. So those are that. All right, guys, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe if you're not already. If you want to see what we're up to day to day, you can follow me over on Instagram at The Simple Happy Life. And I hope you guys are doing well. I'll chat with you soon. Bye.